I was reading one of the great works of English literature by Henry David Thoreau called Walden, or Life in the Woods. It is interesting, on page 19 of this particular book, he says these words, quote, to anticipate not the sunrise and the dawn merely, but nature herself. How many mornings, summer and winter, before any neighbor was stirring about his business, have I been about mine? No doubt, many of my townsmen have met me returning from this enterprise. Farmers starting for Boston in the twilight and woodchoppers going to their work. It is true, I never assisted the sun materially in its rising, but it was of the last importance only to be present at it. So many autumns, I, and winter days spent outside the town, trying to hear what was in the wind, and to hear and to carry it express." End of quote. As I read this statement, I am reminded of the Bible and its emphasis on nature. One cannot read, for example, the book of Job, without seeing that Job had a deep love for nature. One cannot read Psalm 100 or, or 104 without seeing the importance of nature and God's creative work. As believers in Jesus Christ, we want to worship Jesus Christ, who is the creator of nature in all things because of his excellence and his great creative power. This reminds me of Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. I love that. Hashemayim, uh, the heavens are declaring the glory of God, and the rakia, the expanse, shows his handiwork. Day by day pours forth speech, and night by night, reveals knowledge, and there is no speech, and there are no words. Their voice <laughs> is not heard, yet their line has gone forth in all the earth, and their words to the ends of the earth. He has set a tent for the sun, which as a bridegroom comes out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. <laughs> His going forth is from one end of heaven and his circuit unto their ends. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. As I read these words and Thoreau's, I thought about how often in our world today, we don't take time to watch the sun, look at the stars, or at God's great creative work. In Psalm 104, the psalmist sets forth some beautiful pictures of God's creation when he talks about how he causes the grass to grow and, the wa and waters the mountain. The psalmist views the cedar trees, or the cedar trees. He notices the birds, the storks, the high mountains, and how the wild goats dwell there. As we read a great psalm like this one, in our time of great technology, we seldom take time to notice God's theater. That's what Calvin called it, where God is constantly putting on a theater performance in nature. Watching the great works of the Lord in nature, I believe in some ways, has been lost today. We need to get back to that and see the power of the Lord and the greatness of his majesty seen in his great creative work. We do not worship nature, but we do worship the God who created nature. We are told in the New Testament, all things were made 
through him, speaking of Jesus Christ as the agent of creation. And as a Christian minister, I love that Panta di Altua Geneta, Kaikurisa Altua Geneta, Udechen Ha Gegenin. That is, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And so as we look at nature, we see the creation that Jesus Christ brought for us to see, to observe, and to watch. May we spend our days allowing the Lord Jesus Christ to let us see the beauty of his creative work in nature and in our hearts through our faith in him as personal Savior and Lord, and observe his theater acted out daily in nature.